Hello, America, and welcome to the Glenn Beck Program and The Blaze, the network that you are building. Yesterday and last night, in what is now being called coordinated attacks, both U.S. embassies in Egypt and Libya came under siege. In Libya, the U.S. ambassador, Chris Stevens, and three other embassy members were killed when their car came under rocket attack. Reports suggest Stevens died from suffocation, while others by gunshot wounds. By the way, there were two Marines. It was the first time since 1979 that an active U.S. ambassador has been murdered, and there's only been six in our nation's history where this has happened. Most of the media outlets now are reporting this attack was sparked by an outrage over a controversial anti-Islamic film that was posted on YouTube recently. That's a lie. I'll report the truth. That film has been out. They waited. That film, that, that attack happened yesterday because of a group of subhuman, bloodthirsty, American-hating animals wanted to kill Americans on the anniversary of September 11th. It's just that simple. No content in any movie is justification for killing anybody. It's an insult to even mention a YouTube clip as a possible cause for violence. Any reasonable human being knows the problem likely runs a little deeper than YouTube, but the media is not reasonable and they are negligent. But what should we expect from the same people who are telling you that the revolution in Egypt is the Arab Spring and glorious little Thomas Jeffersons are going to sprout up all over the globe? Let me remind you of this. If this is the first time that you've seen this program or you've seen me on TV since I left Fox, what was happening when, when we left Fox? I did that last week and I said, look, look for these things. While they cheered the Arab Spring, the, all of the elites in the media and in Washington, oh, I warned America that the Muslim Brotherhood could not be allowed to grab power. Oh, they wouldn't. And I said, if they did, it would make 1979 look like a picnic. I warned of a caliphate, a United States of Islam. I also told you that the left was involved, and it was the same movement as Occupy Wall Street, and they would join forces with the left, and that countries like Egypt and Iran would work together. Well, now let's see. A year later, let's see exactly what happened. Now, the Libyan embassy has been brutally attacked. At least four Americans are dead. And the United States Embassy in Cairo was attacked as well on September 11th. There, the compound was overwhelmed and the American flag was ripped down, replaced with another flag that read, listen to this, Christians, no God but God, and Mohammed is prophet. They also graffitied the building with Osama bin Laden's name, and they wrote the United States of Muslim. Gee, that sounds an awful lot like the United States of Islam. It's a caliphate they're pushing for. And protesters filled the air with chants of, I am a terrorist, while many of them wore Guy Fox masks. Whoa, I've seen those before. Seems like they're on the same team. Do you know where the Muslim Brotherhood and now Egyptian President Mohammed Corsi, a good guy, according to the President of the United States, do you know where he was a couple of weeks ago? Something that said, no, but nothing, it would never happen. In Iran, holding what the media said was impossible, a meeting that could never happen with Mahmoud Ahmadinejad. And Egypt's response to the embassy attacks today, was it sympathy? Was it regret? Maybe it was remorse, condemnation. Nope. The Muslim Brotherhood called for more protest against the anti-Islamic film, asking for, quote, peaceful protest on Friday outside all of the main mosques of Egypt's provinces to denounce offenses to religion and to the prophet. You see, killing innocents in the name of Allah doesn't appear to offend Muslim extremists and the Muslim Brotherhood. But when somebody posts a video on YouTube, it's time to kill Americans. Warning. This is the same group our own president is giving over a billion dollars in financial aid to. The world, my friend, is upside down. And we have a president giving aid to our enemies and making enemies out of our friends. And perhaps even worse than Egypt's response was the response of this administration. The U.S. Embassy in Cairo first responded to the attacks with this. Quote, the embassy of the United States in Cairo condemns the continuing efforts by misguided individuals to hurt the religious freedoms of Muslims as we condemn efforts to offend believers of all religions. Are you kidding me? After some criticism, they doubled down and tweeted the statement still stands. 
After more criticism and a biting statement, thank God for Mitt Romney, calling the reaction a disgrace, the administration finally distanced themselves. Too late, gang. Pay attention, America. Romney spoke this morning just before the president did, and whoa, was the contrast a little stark. Obama looked lost. He looked disinterested. He read the statement with all the passion of a heavily sedated Nicolas Cage. Romney, inspired by vowing never again to apologize for American values. A president who won't apologize for America. Wow, that's a novel thought, isn't it? And to make matters even worse, according to the White House calendar, there is now no public record of President Barack Obama attending his daily intelligence briefings in the week leading up to these attacks on both embassies. He didn't even bother to show up. By the way, Patrick Poole on The Blaze on this program last night briefed you on the trouble of the Middle East. Where was he? He came here directly from the Capitol building where he was warning the night before that this could happen. He was warning that this was just the beginning. If you watched the show last night, you got the briefing that the president skipped out on. Also, just before we left Fox, we said our president was going to abandon Israel. Well, here's the latest. Last night, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu asked for a meeting with the president, but was denied because Obama is just too darn busy. Busy with what, you might ask? Clearly not intelligence briefings. A report uh, is that he had a, an interview with radio DJ named Pimp with a Limp. Oh, and when he wants this meeting, well, he's awfully darn busy. Uh, he's going to be on David Letterman. Priorities, America. Netanyahu was not amused. The world tells Israel, wait, there's still time. And I say, wait for what? Wait until when? He's right. Wait for what? More of the same? Time is running out. And our president is spending his time doing interviews with pimp with a limp. So now what do you do with this? On Fox, I used to just tell you these things, and it would frustrate me and you, but I want you to know what you can do with this information. I'm going to show you a glimpse into the future next.